Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online Let's Talk video with me, Sherman. Today guys, we are taking a look at the latest post from developer Brian Wheeler. He is the lead PvP designer over at, um, well he's not the lead PvP designer, he's actually the lead combat designer now. Uh, his, his position changed because if you guys didn't know, um, the person who was doing it before uh, stepped out, left the company. And Brian took over his place. A lot of people weren't happy with the original guy, um, but that's okay. He, I thought he did a good job for what he was do, trying to do with the game, and hopefully this will be a better change. But we'll see. So update 22 is coming to PTS in a few weeks, uh, probably exactly a few weeks from this post, and. Um, yeah, so let's just go over this. So it says, with update 22 coming on the PTS in a few weeks, we want to give all, uh, give you all an update on how we're approaching combat adjustments this patch. We know there's a lot of information out there already since the embargo lift, and it's great to see everyone excited about elsewhere and the Necromancer. However, be aware, unless it's stated from us or included in official patch notes, it's all subject to change until it's on the PTS and live. So, basically, everything we've seen on the Necromancer still has a chance of changing. I, I, I doubt it. I think they're going to do some minor adjustments until um, it goes on PTS. Once it gets on PTS, I think that's where we might see a few more changes, but I don't think we're going to see considerable changes to the class once it's on PTS. Uh, but they're doing more than that. They're not, they're, they're not, they didn't just touch the necromancer they actually put their hands on every class in the game and every ability that the class has so we're going to go over that information here in a second but it says with that said let's dive into how we are approaching El the elsewhere update first off we are getting the necromancer ready for prime time this class was created with three major tenets of play and create a class that feels entirely unique and different than any other class in eso Create a class that embodies necromancy and Elder Scrolls lore and canon. Add a new gameplay element via corpses, temporary pets, and emphasize, uh, emphasize positional gameplay. Which, by the way, no offense, sounds really cool. Because it's something we don't have. We have some positional gameplay, depending on what... Like, if you're playing a healer, you got positional gameplay um, with your AoE heals and things like that. But it's really easy to, to, to do because the AoEs are so large. But we do have some positional gameplay depending on what role you play, too. So, going on, it says the Necromancer is the first class to have multiple passes by our own players prior to its launching with the class reps and members of the community that recently visited the studios. If you guys didn't know, they invited out um, all the class reps and all uh, a lot of community members. I was not, fortunately, one of them. Um, one of these days, maybe. We'll see. But, yeah, they invited a bunch of people out to test the Necromancer and test out a little bit of Elsewhere. Um, I know Zynode went, Shimmer, um, there were some other, like, uh, live streamers and YouTubers that went out and checked this stuff out. So, uh, and along with the class reps, they all got their hands on the class, they got to look at it, they got to see how it played and, and what they thought of it. A lot of them came back with a lot of positive feedback on it. <coughs> But again, opinions vary based on who plays it. So I can't say whether or not I'm going to like it, but until I get my hands on it. So I'm not going to say any more about that. But it says, uh, going on from this, over the years of development, there have been numerous changes to the class abilities, both in function and, or, and under the hood with code. These changes have shaped the face of combat in ESO over time. But as the game has evolved with each passing year, we have accept, uh, uh, sorry, occurred many changes that have fallen out of, uh, whatever, Vogue. I don't know why they put that in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't mean to cough. And it says, uh, going on, okay. with this update, we are making several adjustments to bring abilities back in line with the current state of the game and create a solid foundation of standards for the future. So in update 22, we have done a pass on every class ability looking for errant or missing data. We also made sure abilities follow a coherent pattern of rank progression that is easily easy to identify 
For example, if an ability does morph, da uh, the morph does damage, the rank progression adds more damage. If an ability does healing, the rank progression does more healing. Ability coefficients and costs have been adjusted to ensure the healing or damage within the type of ability, such as a, D a DD, DOT, HOT, or Direct Heal, are more consistent. The duration of abilities and their sub-effects have been normalized so, that, uh, so they adhere to patterns that fall with the playstyle of ESO, making their use in rotations easier to handle, for example. Lots of stuff, guys. <laughs> so, single target dots have been a, a long-standing group of abilities that were not consistent in their application of damage. Looking at these types of abilities, duration, tick, frequency, and delays, a consistent pattern of application was missing from the ability to ability. Some of these abilities have been used by as spammable abilities, Searing Strike, despite that being against their design in the past, we've re uh, restructured them to follow a standard behavior. So, <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this small section and kind of go over what my thoughts of this is and how I feel about these changes. And then go into kind of explain um, reasoning. So... If there is initial hit upon casting one of these abilities, there will always be a delay between the initial hit and the first tick. If there is no initial hit, there will be no delay, and delays, i.e. an ability that doesn't hit immediately, will always be the same duration as the dot's frequency in which it ticks. So basically they're fixing the duration and ticks and things like that of dots and how they work which is good. I'm also thinking that this applies to not just damage over time abilities, but heal over time. Um, so damage over time ability, like DD is uh, doing damage. That's That means the ability just does damage. And what they're doing with this change, it sounds like, is they're, they're adjusting how much damage, like direct, da or sorry, direct damage does how much a dot does, how much a hot does, and how much direct healing does. In its um, present state, it's very sporadic in what does what and how it affects gameplay. Now, with this change, it sounds like they're putting more of a, like, okay, this, this ability is going to do this. You know, it's going to do this damage and this damage over time, and this one's going to do this damage over time. It's not going to be, you know, whatever. So it sounds like they're really getting in and focusing on making sure that the abilities work the way they want them to. And to me, that's a good change. But at the same time, whatever abilities they do change, this can have a positive and it can have a massive negative effect. So we'll see when the PTS comes out, like what kind of changes are made and how it affects the rest of us. All right, going on next. Where abilities that were considered out of standards based on the audit pass noted above, some abilities contained a lot of functionality, incapacitating strikes, they're, they're pointing that one out, and others not as much, teleport strike. When looking at abilities across the board moving forward, abilities with the same category should have a base level of performance, but also have something that makes it unique. In doing the, this pass, we found abilities that have that had components which were above or below base functionality and made adjustments to bring them in line. In some cases, base damage healing has been increased to make up for the removal of additional functions. In other cases, base damage healing has been reduced to make up for adding in additional functions. <coughs> Lots of... It sounds like we're getting a lot of skill changes in the next update. In terms of quality of life changes, we heard your feedback about cast times being difficult to incorporate into fluid combat rotations have made adjustments to many abilities with cast times to make them easier to weave and be more reliable. In most of these cases, we have adjusted the damage as well as coordination with cast time adjustments to ret uh, retain the DPS you'll be used in, uh, that you're used to in Update 21. Okay. And then it says there will be a bunch of patch notes coming to the PTS soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for uh, reading, gang. <laughs> and if you've gotten this far, here's a little sneak peek 
of what's to come. So, Cleave, rework this ability in its morphs. Damage increased by 50%, but remove the bleed from the base ability completely. So, Cleave now just hits multiple targets at 50% more damage with no bleed. This is a two-handed ability, really cool. Carve, retains the bleed, bleed damage increased by 25%, but no longer grants minor heroism. This is a positive with a negative. So the positive is the bleed damage has been increased, which is gonna bring it more in par with dual wield. So that's good. But at the same time, taking away the minor heroism, which made the skill unique, is gonna hurt it. The next one, Brawler, remove the bleed from this ability, increase the shield granted from this morph by 100% at base, but reduce the bonus scaling per target hit from 100% to 50%. This means the base, <coughs> at base, this ability will be 100% stronger and before, than before, sorry, and will be 14% stronger than previously if you get maximum bonus. So if you get the maximum bonus when you hit in multiple targets, you are gonna get a massive shield. So basically, Carve and Brawler were, were identical skills in a lot of ways. Like they both had a bleed on them. One had the minor heroes and one had the shield. Now they're taking the minor heroes away from Carve and changing Brawler to have no bleed and instead just be this shield. So we get a DPS skill with a tank skill. I know a lot of people are gonna be, that's not really a tank skill, but it is. It's, it's anything that keeps damage mitigation from you is something that you use to mitigate damage. That's what tanks do. So that's more in line with like a tanking ability and a damage ability, which I think is really cool. I mean, that separation right there just says, it screams at me, hey, here's a DPS ability, here's a tank ability. Pick, pick the one that's gonna work best for your play style and how you play. So I really do like this change. I don't like the, the fact that we're losing a bleed on it, but the fact that they boosted the shield strength just just blows me away. So really excited for that change. And that's pretty much, this is like the, the sneak peek of what's to come. So you gotta remember, all class abilities, and even by the looks of it, all weapon abilities um, have been touched. So I'm, I'm guessing all abilities that had any kind of damage, healing, or anything like that incorporated with them have been touched in this pass. So update 22 is going to have a lot of a lot of class changes, a lot of a lot of changes, and. It sound like it sounds good when you think about it. It sounds really good because you're like finally they're they're listening to the community. They're listening to to what the players want, but who are they really listening to? And and I'm not doing this to sound rude or mean or anything like that. But who are they truly listening to? Because on one spectrum, you can say that they're really listening to the community when in reality they're listening to one side of the t of of the the community the other side of the community is going to be sitting here scratching their hands going why did this change like i like the way the ability was before and that's what we're going to get we're going to get a lot of feedback or they're going to get a lot of feedback on this and it's not going to be positive a lot of it's going to be negative so but yeah it's going to be interesting to see um i'm i'm excited to see the patch notes and also kind of leery <laughs> like with all patch notes i'm i'm I have my positive and I might be negative, and I might come off as negative when I first read them, because I'm gonna look at things and be like, what what were we thinking? And then I'm gonna get to the nitty gritty when I actually get my hands on the changes, and I'm gonna go, oh, oh, okay, now I see. Because we can't really dictate something until we have our hands on it. Like, we can't, we can give our thoughts and our opinions on what we see on screen, but that's about it. Anything beyond that, until you can play it and test it, we can't really give true feedback. So, I will do the PTS patch notes when they come out, guys. Um, but, again, I'm just going to let you guys know now that uh, 
please take it with a grain of salt when I read those patch notes because I will give my thoughts and feedbacks of how I see the changes until I can get my hands on it and and actually give my thoughts and opinions on the changes I can't really say so I can't I can say but I can't really give true feedback but that's pretty much it for this guys um this is probably gonna be my only post this week maybe I'm gonna try and get another video out later on but I can't make promises yet um, because of everything that's going on if you guys uh, don't know I'm just gonna give you guys a little small tidbit of info so um, my, my kids went on a two-week holiday through school and during their two-week spring holiday my counterpart had surgery on their hip and it was like a one-day procedure they kept her in overnight sent her home then that day after she fell popped the hip out and they had to go back in and fix it so it's just been really hectic with that and then on top of that everyone in my in my household wind up getting sick including my counterpart um my counterpart got pneumonia was in the hospital afterwards and then uh, me and my 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 daughter both got sick we weren't sure if it was allergies or an rsv thing and then now my my son's sick so it's just been it's been really crazy trying to deal with all that and that's why i'm still coughing is i, I don't want to but kind of can't hold it back um and why my voice sounds a little raspy is because i've been i've been sick for like a week and a half so but yeah but yeah i do want to get back to videos trust me there's I, I really do but i'm hoping that this is this just leads up to the next video that i can do and and they just get you know get you guys some better content <laughs> so but yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you guys liked it you know what come next go ahead and hit that like button if you guys want to see more videos by me you can subscribe other than that i want to thank you all for watching until next time have a wonderful day and this guy might see you in game well hopefully soon <laughs>